Hi, I'm Francis Campoy, and this is Just for Funk. Welcome to episode number five. So today, we're going to be talking about flags. What are flags? Well, I'm sure you've all seen them before. Uh, flags are the little arguments that you can send to a command line uh, program, where you can say something like ls-r. That dash r is a flag. And we're going to be learning how to use those flags and how to define them for your programs in Go. And not only that, that will be the beginning. But afterwards, we're going to see how you can define your own kind of flags. And we're going to play with this idea of having a color flag, a hexadecimal color flag. So you can send something like dash background ff, 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 or something like that, right? Uh, so let's get started. The first thing that I'm going to do is define a little program with a flag that I'm going to call background, that it's going to be just some text. So let's see how to do that. I'm going to create my main.go. And in there, it's going to be package main, func main. And I want to print background is background. And I still need to define what background is. Uh, so I'm going to say that background. Uh, background is flag.string, and flag.string uh, going to pass some arguments here. So we're going to have the name. I'm going to call it bg. The value, by default, I'm going to say it's uh, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. And the usage, uh, background color. Then I need to call flag.parse. And once I do this, now background is a pointer to a string. So when you call flag.string, you're going to need to then say, OK, we're going to print background like that. Or if you prefer, you could also do it like this. Uh, this is pretty much the same thing. The cool thing is that if you say that, GoVet will warn you about the fact that it seems like you're trying to print a string, but you passed the pointer to strings. Cool. Let's, let's build this and use it. So I'm going to do go install and call flags, and background is 0. I can do flags-pg equals fffff. And now background is fffff. Cool. And also, I can do uh, dash health, which I think is pretty cool. And it will show you all the flags that have been defined and how to use them. OK, you might wonder, why am I defining background as a local variable to main rather than as a global variable to the package, right? Uh, so imagine you're doing something like this, right? Like you're defining at this point. The program will still work perfectly. And then you could call something that that's draw. And that function draw says something like uh, print uh, drawing with background, whatever, background, I'm not able to type, uh, background. Cool. And that's going to be a pointer there. And, and this is fine. But the problem is that imagine that this draw is going to be defined in a different file. Understanding where every single one of those flags is defined might get a little bit hard. So as a best practice, I think it's better to move those declarations to main and then forcing passing that variable uh, around as a parameter. It makes your code much easier to follow, in my opinion. So uh, in this case, you could do uh, not back off, background. And then have it here, background as a string. And now it's not a pointer anymore. And I think this code is easier to maintain. So that's why I'm going to be using it this way. Cool. But what if this draw actually got a color? So a color.color, .color, that is C. And I'm going to print C. Now this doesn't work, because it's saying, OK, you're saying that you're going to receive a color. But instead of a color, you're passing me a string. That doesn't work. So what do we need to do? Well, we need to parse that string to be a color. So we're going to do something like stir conv uh, parse, parse int. And when you do parse int, you're going to pass the string that you want to parse. So we're going to call it background. I keep on writing back, back off. Uh, the base, in this case, is going to be 16, because that is the uh, hexadecimal. 
And then the bit size, we're going to say 64. Why not? We don't really need it, but why not? The value is going to return our integer. Uh, I'm going to call it v and an error. So if the error is not nil, we're going to say something about it. Say, hey, uh, uh, background is not a color. And we're going to print the error. Otherwise, what we're going to do is uh, create a new color. So I'm going to create an RGBA. And I'm going to say R is uh, the top part. And then, so let's see. V, div so R, V, and the red. So the red's going to be. Uh, let me think about this. Actually, it's the other way around. We're not going to do uh, the A. It is only, so this one color, this is another color, and this is another color. So we're going to start by the end. We're going to say that B is uh, B divide uh, modulo 256. That is going to be our B. G is going to be B divided by 256 modulo 256. And R is going to be V divided by 256 times 256. And we'll, we'll modify this code in a minute to make it be better. Uh, OK, so R equals R, G equals G. Oh, that is R equals R, G equals g, b equals b, and alpha equals, uh, let's say, 255, because that is the that is not transparent at all, which is what we want, because otherwise we would not be able to see a color at all. So, And we're going to put that in C. And that does not compile, because uh, we need to use UA, UE and Tate. So we're going to do UE, uh, yeah, UE and 8. So we're going to do that. Actually, let me use multiple cursors. Uh, if I'm able to remember how to do that. Oh, there you go. U, E, and 8. And go to the angle line. Multi cursors is so cool. Uh, I don't know who told me about it, but if you don't know how to do it, just search for multi cursor, multi -cursors on your favorite editor. I'm using Visual Studio Code. Totally worth the, uh, the time learning it. Saves you so much time. Cool. So uh, that works now. And then we can pass C here. And so now what we're doing is we're parsing the We get the string from the flag. We parse it. We make sure it's actually a color. And then we pass it to draw. And uh, I'm going to do RGBA. I'm going to call that. Uh, so RGBA. Uh, that's going to be RGBA. And we're going to call. RGBA, RGBA, and we're going to pass RGBA. Cool. OK, uh, let's try to run this code. So if I do go install and I run flags, that will say, oh, that is wrong. Uh, the last one should be 255. RTBA is unit 8. Oh, it is fine, because I think that uh, by default, it's actually doing, um, it's actually printing UN32. So it doesn't go from 0 to 155. It actually goes from 0 to the number, which if we use Python real quick, uh, so 255 to 155. No, uh, 256 times 256 minus 1. That is exactly that number, right? So it's going to be the equivalent of 255 up to the number. So instead of doing that, uh, let me modify this code again and do R, G, B, and A. R equal to R divided by 256. G divided by 266. Same thing. And same thing. And run it again. Uh, go install. And Nope. <laughs> no. OK. Uh, let's do flags. 
boom. Okay, so that works. And now if we do dash b, uh, if we do dash background zero zero one one two two, it will say so one one is sixty. Okay, that looks good. Th those are the numbers that I'm passing. So so this is working now. It is a decent program. I mean, it's not awful. Uh, but the problem is that imagine that now you have foreground. And all of a sudden, you need to do the same thing all over, right? Uh, foreground color. Now you need to basically duplicate all of this code. And you could have something like, you know, I'm going to have a function uh, that's going to call parse color that given a string returns a color dot color and an error. And what this is doing is basically all of this, and it returns that color. Return, return color and nil, and here return nil, and an error, error f, not a color. Okay, and we're gonna parse the s string. So now we can do. Foreground is parse color of foreground. Uh, if error is done nil, log fatal that. And background is parse color of background. And if error is done nil, log fatal that. And this is kind of okay. Uh, let's but both uh, foreground and background. And so now our functions are foreground and background. And what we want to do is we want to print. So what we can do is uh, print color. So uh, given a color, color dot color, we're going to return a string. And it's going to do exactly that thing we did there. So it's going to be doing something like C dot RGBA. It's going to divide that. And then it's going to return S printf. So S printf returns a string rather than printing it. And it's going to return that thing, RGBA, all of those values. Cool. So now we can do drawing with foreground S and background S. And we're going to pass print color foreground and print color background. Cool. And this is still kind of OK, right? Uh, let's try to run it. So go install and run it. Uh, fla whoa, flags. Uh, it says those are both empty. And Actually, let's change foreground to be FF, FF, FF. Let's try that. Go install and run it. OK, so we're getting the good results. And if I do background is 112233 and foreground is 001122, we're going to get the values that we expect. So that is pretty good, right? Now. What if you wanted to have something that it was easier to use? Because <laughs> at this point, we start to having something that it works, but you need to remember that given a flag uh, string, you need to parse it, right? What I could like to do is do flag.color, flag.color. And that will actually already be a color. So then I can drop this and be, whoop, and be very happy. Uh, <laughs> Obviously, it doesn't work because we don't have flag.color. But that's what I want to do next. Let's go back to, the, to what we had before. So we have that flag.string, right? But let's see the definition. It's flag.string calls command line string and gives a value. And so command line, it's just a variable, which is the command. It's a flag set. So it's a set of flags. That's a good name, by the way. <laughs> flag set is just a set of flags. And we have command line. It's the default one. Uh, and we call string on that one. And what string does 
is passes the same parameters and it calls string var. And string var, what it's doing is calling f.bar, and f.bar is the one that actually registers the variable, right? Turns out that var, what it receives is a value. And that value is the one we care about. It, that is an interface that has the method string and set. So if we were able to make our type color satisfy that interface, then we should be able to say flag.var and pass a color. So let's try to do that. I'm going to create my own color. Uh, let's name it something else, uh, color flag or a color value, uh, which is a struct that has a color dot color inside. So uh, I'm going to define background and foreground to be color values. And call flag dot var. Going to pass my background. The name is going to be still the same. Uh, BG and the usage string is going to be the same background color and then I'm going to do the same thing for the background uh, for the foreground sorry so foreground 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 and then I'm going to save this okay and now background and uh, foreground are already actually let me change it since they're already colors I'm going to call it like this which is the same name we used before so then I should be able to be able to drop this Cool, but this is not really what we have, right? Because if we actually want a color, uh, we need to pass a color, color dot color, and this is not a color dot color. It has a it has a color dot color inside, but it is not a color dot color. It doesn't satisfy their interface, so we need the method RGBA for that. Um, quick, easy way to do it: struct embedding. If I remove the name on that field, turns out that now we're doing struct embedding. So we're ex exposing all the methods of that interface onto our color value type, which means that now our color value type has the method RGBA. Therefore, it also satisfies the color interface. So if we save that, now it works, which is pretty cool. But we're still not uh, compiling this. And it's not compiling it because it says, well, you know, uh, you're supposed to have uh, those two methods. You're supposed to be a flag dot value, and you're missing the what method are you missing? Missing the set method. Okay, so we need to define set method on that color value. So we're gonna call it set, but we also need to know what is that actually? Uh, what is the sun? Okay, so given a string returns an error. Cool. So string returns an error. Interesting. This actually looks a lot like a parse color, but we actually here we return a color. Well, in here we're gonna do is we're gonna modify the color we have inside. This doesn't sound too hard. So what I'm gonna do is copy paste, and we're not gonna return that. We're gonna do c dot color is equals to that. Uh, we don't return anything else other than that. And cool. Um, S is a string. Cool. So now our color value has the set method. But this is still not compiling because it's saying, oh, you also need miss the string method to make it a stringer. So color value, value. So string that returns a string. And that is exactly as print color. So let's do that. And now everything compiles, which is cool because you know then go is if, if the prime compiles, obviously it works. The cool thing is that we can now get rid of these two functions, right? Oh no, because uh, of course we need to get rid of this one. We need to get rid of this one. And we're going to pass person V. This interesting. So this will work because FG, uh, it's a color, which is a color interface. But also, it turns out that what we're passing is a pointer to a color value that also defines the stream method. So when we print it, it will use the correct one.
So let's see. Uh, let's install it and run it. And that was bad. <laughs> we got a panic because um, line 27 is not happy. Oh, OK. So what happens if we print and C is nil? That is, that is a problem indeed. So we're calling RGBA. But there's no color inside. So if C equals nil, let's return nil. Maybe. Let's try that. Go install and flags. And again, line 30 now. Is that better? Uh, let me see. Line 30. So yeah, no, it is the same place. So I guess if C dot color is nil, then we know there's a problem in there. OK, so now we have nil and nil. And that is because we don't have a default value. So and we don't have a default value because we didn't pass any. So let's say that the default value is going to be f, 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 f. There's two ways of doing it. This is one of them. Um, Oh, OK. If C is nil or see the color is nil, color, uh, color value. Oh, I know. This is interesting. So why is this printing uh, those square brackets there? If I'm not uh, square brackets, the, those are not square. Those are braces. So why is it printing the braces? I didn't say to print braces. I just say print 0, 0, 0, right? Why is this? Well, actually, this is happening. Because what we're passing, fg, it is not a pointer to color. No. It is a pointer to color is this, a, co a pointer to color value. Where we're passing is a color itself, which satisfies the RGBA, because we did struct embedding. But it doesn't satisfy the stringer method, because the string method was defined only on pointer to color value. So the solution for this is actually quite simple. Let's just pass this instead. Whoops. OK, so I'm almost sure that that should work. OK, cool. That is totally not what I wanted to do. So what I wanted to do was to print this. Uh, so let's pass RTBA 0, 0, 0, 0. And I'm not sure I'm very happy with that. Uh, so what I could do instead is do RGBA. Those are, what are those? Uh, UN32s. If this is not nil and this is not nil, then we're going to actually initialize those. So we're going to put that there and put that there. And otherwise, we're going to print that. And that should now work. No. <laughs> uh, oh, and yes. OK, so now, now we got it working. But I want to have a, a default value for the foreground to be white. Well, the way to do it here, it could be foreground is a color value that has 255, 255, 255. Actually, color dot white. That should work. Background is color value, and we don't give anything. And now, by doing that, we're basically able to set the, the colors we want to use. So color dot white, it doesn't have the same type as what we expect. This is a gray 16. But I do not care because it satisfies the color dot color interface. So we're good. We can use it like that. But this is still not what I want. I want to be able to do something like flags dot color, and I'm gonna actually flag dot color of bg color dot white actually foreground color dot white, and that is the foreground color. Uh, that's going to be fg. And then same thing for bg color.black. And that's going to be the background color. 
So BG. So I want to be able to do this as we were doing before. But flag.color does not exist. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new function. I'm going to call flag color. And this function could be anywhere. Uh, I really don't care. Basically, the idea is that you could create your own package that has all of those built-in, uh, not built-in, all the custom flags that you're going to be using in your code, and then use that all over. I'm going to define that function that given, you know what? I'm going to copy the names from, so flag.int. Let's get those same names. So flag.int uh, has those names. So name value, which should not be an int, but a color dot color, the usage, and it's going to return a color dot color. Cool. So now we don't need to pass this anymore, because now flag color it will hide all the complexity, right? We don't need to know now that color value is a thing. We don't care about that anymore. We don't need to care about how set works or string works. What we know is that we want a color, so we call flag color, and that will give us what we expect. But this doesn't work. So how are we going to do it? Well, actually, it's pretty simple, right? A color value that contains uh, the value we passed, and we're going to return that. And also, we need to do a flag var of the value, the name, and the usage. And now everything works. So let's try. Go install flags dash foreground one 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 two 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 three three, and we got what expected. And background could be three 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 two two one one, and we get the values in the good order. Cool. So this works. And I think that the important thing to learn here is. OK, so if you're repeating your code over and over and over, what you want to do is to make it as easy to reuse as possible. And you can start with creating that function, right? Like the, the function we had at the beginning, parse color and print color. But then you start seeing that those should be attached to some kind of type. So when you start thinking about types that you're going to be using with packages that already exist in the standard library, piece of advice, always check for the interfaces defining those packages. Because very often, those interfaces in packages are going to help you modify the behavior. The same way we have the stringer interface in the fun package, we also have things like uh, marshaller in the JSON package or XML package in our marshaller that will allow you to modify how the modify the behavior of how your types are printed or marshaled, or in this case, how a flag is handled. So I think that you learn uh, from this that the flag package is pretty amazing. And you'll be able to use it uh, more, define your own libraries, define your own libraries of flags, and share them with the world. Right now, I have a couple of flags. Uh, the one that I just showed, the, uh, the flags, the color, the color, the flags color. And one more, uh, which is a text template that I already exported and uh, open sourced on my tools repo. So you can go there and see that we have how to use hex colors. But we also have text, text templates. So you can say something like, by default, you know, uh, you're going to have this template, but use something else. And text template is going to return a pointer to a template, dot template, which is amazing. Because then you're going to be able to use it much easier. Great, so that's all. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, I definitely did because it was probably the easiest ones to build because everything that I was talking about today was already built for something else. I actually used these two flags on uh, one of my other tools, which is called the uh, Podcast to YouTube, which is what I use to upload directly from, uh, from an RSS feed to YouTube for the Google Cloud Platform podcast, uh, which you should check out. I'm one of the co-hosts, and it is a pretty awesome. Uh, if you want to, to hear my accent more often, that is a very good way of doing it. So anyway, hope you liked it. And as always, thanks for watching.